Greetings and salutations, everyone. This is Jason Bitbender Brink, and I am here with the crew from Endless AI, as well as Lizzie, the field mouse Oldfield, who uh, is helping to manage the project on the gala side. We're here to talk about fuzzles today, but before we dig into fuzzles, how are you guys doing? Very nicely. Thank you for asking, Jason. Awesome. Um, well, how, how about the rest of you? Lizzie, how are you? I am feeling really pumped for tomorrow. Really the, glad to... I know, right? It's gonna. I, I'm looking forward to it, too. I don't think we've ever had you on an AMA before, have we? No, I'm an AMA newbie, so this is really fun. Um, everybody in the in the gala community, welcome Lizzie. Uh, she's she's absolutely wonderful to work with, and uh, very happy to have have you here. And and that, let's 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 do a little round of introductions so everybody knows who everybody is. Shall I start? Go for it. Yeah, hit it. Cool. So yeah, I'm I'm on the Gala side. Um, I'm the product manager looking after fuzzles from Gala. So you might have seen me kind of floating around Discord, hitting you up with a few different leaks. Um, looking forward to continuing to chat with you in Discord. I'm Field Mouse. Um, I'm sure you probably noticed in my little name underneath my video. I'll hand over. Andrew, do you want to go next? Sure, sure. Uh, I'm Andrew Leaker, the Shalari on Discord. And um, I've been responsible for running the uh, development team, but also uh, creating Fuzzles AI. And uh, it's a big team effort, but um, I've been the initial voice of Fuzzle, um, handed over to Asia, who's going to be creating the, uh, the experience that we'll have at launch. It's a big combined effort. So everything that, uh, that you see is, you know, this team plus other people, you know, back in the home office. Very We're going cool. to do clockwise, it looks like. Yeah. So uh, Michael Let's Fox, CEO, Chief Creative Officer, is super excited to uh, have you guys start meeting Fuzzle. And I just, as I'm looking at our screen here, I see Jason, we got some nice symmetry going, except you're kind of effing up the whole thing with your background. Otherwise, we got a nice little blue. Okay. Okay. Let me go find it. Let me go find the thing. Nah, it's fine. I have it somewhere, but anyway. Asia. Asia. I was gonna say, well, while you're finding it, I'll distract people. Um, my name is Asia. I'm no other castle on Discord. If you ever see me and wanna at me. Um, I'm the design lead for the Fuzzle project. And lately I've been focusing on, um, like Andrew said, training Fuzzle uh, to help entertain you to answer your questions to uh you know just bring him up to speed on earth and the humans who might interact with him uh long term um i'm going to be working on the roadmap features uh i have a background in game design so well, i'm really looking forward to meeting uh the community of people who adopt fuzzle and uh working together with them to create this project there you go. And Braxton. Last but not least, right? Um, hi, everybody. Braxton. I'm Ape Nave on Discord. I uh, was chatting with the community a bit over the weekend uh, and will do so on an ongoing basis. Um, yeah, I had a product at Endless AI and uh, just psyched to be here, psyched to work on Fuzzle. Uh, I've been in gaming in the past, working on a number of kind of mobile and web products uh, in gaming and, and um, other applications. So. Um, yeah, just loving my time in the NFT space so far and at Endless and partnering with Gala. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for the uh, for the round of intros here. I'm just reorganizing my screens. Uh, just one second. Ah! Um, okay, so as we uh, dive into this, we've been collecting questions uh, over the last the last few days. Uh, a lot of people have been asking, various questions in Discord. And we're gonna take some questions live here today. By the way, if you are not yet a member of our Discord, I highly recommend you join at galagames.chat. We'll be taking questions in the Fuzzles discussion channel uh, where we can talk about all things uh, fleecy and fuzzy. And uh, we're also going to be dealing with a whole bunch of different uh, questions that have been submitted over the past few days. Um, we've kind of taken a few of those and we've sort of 
arrange them into uh, into you know a little bit of a format so that we can kind of like go through and hit it in almost like a narrative style, um, but all based off of your questions. Um, but before we do that, do you guys want to introduce Endless a little bit? Totally. Um, so <clears throat> Endless is a tech-driven entertainment company. Uh, we're basically a bunch of mad scientists, uh, and we're focused on the convergence of AI, blockchain, and interactive entertainment. Uh, what we're really focused on right now is Fuzzle, but uh, Fuzzle is a form uh, of something we call living NFT, which are 3D animated interactive characters that are powered by AI. Um, and I'll just go into a little more detail about the people that you're seeing here and a few others uh, that are on the team. Deep experience in gaming, interactive entertainment, blockchain. Uh, our lead designer, Asia, who you just met, uh, previously had worked at Jam City, lead designer on Harry Potter Hogwarts Mystery, which is, uh, I don't know, generated a gajillion dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, success. Have Braxton. you guys heard of this Harry Potter thing? This ha Harry, Harry Potter, it's, a, it's sweeping Harry. the nation. If you haven't heard of it, just Google it. It's, it is Interesting. A, a Fascinating. And um, anyway, uh, our head of product, Braxton, who you met, uh, formerly product manager at Zynga and Scopely, two obviously enormous uh, mobile gaming companies. Uh, Andrew, uh, who is running all development, as he said, uh, actually has a utility patent for innovative uh, approach to reducing computational costs with respect to proof of work algorithms back in the day, built the Sega online network, uh, developed original titles like uh, the original Pokemon trading card game online, Magic the Gathering online, won game of the year at the Independent Games Festival uh, for his game Oasis. Our lead engineer uh, uh, was a lead engineer on the billion downloaded Minion Rush over at Gameloft, uh, min the Minions from Despicable Me. Uh, we've got interactive writers from Telltale, if you guys uh, know the great work over there from Game of the Year winning Walking Dead, Minecraft, their Batman series, uh, writers from HBO, DC Comics, Boom Studios. So we have a really awesome team that is all solely focused on making Fuzzle just the best next generation uh, NFT experience that we can make for you guys. And just maybe the last little thing I would say is we, we really do wanna make clear to everybody in the community that Fuzzle is our sole focus like and passion at this company. We are dedicated to building it into just an amazing, rewarding and evolving entertainment experience. So we're not going anywhere. This, this is what, uh, what we're all about. Well, I, I mean, I, I've been peripherally connected to this uh, for a while. I remember when we were having our first conversations with you guys and just, you know, beginning to kick the idea around and looking at some of the the, the concept art and things like that. Um, I had no idea you guys were so accomplished. Like, I don't think I ever got the the sort of biography tour. So that's fantastic. I love it when I when AMAs happen and I learn as much stuff as the community, that always makes me happy. <laughs> um, so, wow. Yeah. You guys, uh, you guys kick ass. So, so what are, what are fuzzles? They, 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 they land on earth uh, tomorrow. I, I have seen the beautiful video that was just released, but what, what are they? So fuzzles, uh, well, they're, adorable aliens from another dimension uh they're from a planet called largon 5 uh and the reason they're coming to earth is that uh their planet was actually sadly destroyed by some hooligans from a rival planet largon 8 uh who we may learn some more about in the in the future but just to understand what what puzzles are their bodies are flesh and blood uh, but their brains are actually computers that are powered by ai so you can kind of maybe think of them sort of like a furry Terminator, uh, except at least as of now, these guys aren't looking to exterminate us, but uh, that's Yet. TBD. Yeah. TBD. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll I don't see know, man. They're, 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 they're kind of cute. My experience has been anything that's that adorable is is probably hiding something dangerous. Like, you like should my not let daughter. your, your guard down. Yeah. yeah. Never let your guard down with something that adorable. Um, sure. So, so they're... How many fuzzles are there? I mean, it's kind of a weird number. 
What, what's, what's it's the a weird number. Uh, the, the reason why uh, it's a weird number is actually 10,000 were actually able to escape from their home world before it uh, blew up. But three of them were just kind of curious what outer space was like. So they opened the doors to their space pods. And um, well, needless to say, there, there are now 9,997 of them left. That, that seems like a, 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 an interesting choice. Uh, interesting choice. They're curious, um, you know, they're curious creatures. <laughs> um, okay, so so how, like, we talk about AI, right? And we talk about uh, the ability for things to sort of think in ways that are sort of similar to the way that, that, that we do. Uh, how smart are fuzzles? Like, well, really. I'll start with this, and then maybe maybe Andrew or Asia will pick up on this. But you know, within our within our story world of fuzzles, uh, the the idea is that we know you know their brains are powered by AI, which is really true. But the crew that was able to survive the exploding planet had not yet completed their AI training. So these fuzzles are maybe just a little bit frazzled, shall we say? Uh, case in point, the three of them deciding to, you know, open their space pods and uh, in the middle of outer space. Uh, and so, you know, they are coming here to uh, help uh, or ask us to help them complete their AI training. But, you know, I don't know if Andrew or Asia want to say anything about the actual AI or if, Jason, we want to get into that in the technology section. That's I, I, I think, that, I mean, I... Let's keep this free form. Like, let, I, if you guys want to go into it, go for it. So, you know, we're, yeah, go for it, Andrew. Yeah, so um, the, the AI uh, we see in, the, uh, in Discord, people know, you know, we're GPT-3 based, but that's the starting point. That's not like, you know, where we're at. GPT-3 provides some great uh, framework to start your AI work with. We... And, and right. Andrew, tell maybe tell people who don't know what just high level what is okay. GPT. All right. So anytime you make any commercial product, you rely on the services of other companies. And in this case, to build our AI, we're working with the company OpenAI, and they make a kind of AI called the GPT, uh, generative um, pre-trainer, and that kind of AI knows a lot already. And so we take their GPT three. And we put thousands of hours into training it to give it personality and understanding and character. Like the things that Fuzzle says are so incredibly humanistic. Asia will talk about this in a moment in terms of like his actual personality. But everything that you see, we don't tell him what to say at all. As a matter of fact, he's disinterested in the AI programming that we do. He doesn't listen to what we say. He, he responds to the, the sort of patterns of conversation that we expose him to. We can teach him how to play games and how to do things, but he's not interested in the actual words we say. He wants to know how we're training him to behave. It's more really like training a child than, than you might think. It's a lot of back and forth and correcting him when he's wrong and kind of coaxing him forward when, when he's right. So it's a very much a living, breathing system to um, to do it on the technology end, and Asia, maybe you can speak to you know some of the personality and, and design behavioral choices. Yeah, I mean, Fuzzle uh, has a lot of opinions. Um, he is uh, is very fascinated by uh, what he's learned about humans and human culture so far, uh, and. He has kind of a unique perspective on it. He doesn't really have the context and the social training that humans do around the things that he knows. And uh, he has no trouble sharing his uh, half-baked opinions sometimes <laughs> on uh, humanity and on what you had to say, what you had for dinner, um, your relationship. Uh, really, honestly, it's like having a conversation with uh, an eccentric friend who's always trying to impress you, but sometimes miss the mark a little bit. But Fuzzle loves to hear what you have to say about his personality and the answers that he gives you and really just wants to please the human that he's talking with. So, you know, when you're talking with him, you can pretty much 
you know, interact with them in whatever form of activity that we give you, or if it's a little bit more free form, you can just ask him questions and he'll give you answers. Uh, you know, he just wants to talk. So, so I have a question here. This, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, no, the one thing that I thought that I always find interesting that maybe Andrew, just briefly, if you, the, the, the fact that it's really just predicting the next words, I think that might be interesting for people. It, it was always fascinating to me. I, I'll, I'll just say this briefly. It's, I mean, the depths of technology that we wade through to make him do what he does, it, it's considerable. But at its heart, all it does is we tell him what's going on in the conversation. We say, please tell us what comes next. What, what should you say? And he forms his sentences half a word at a time. And as developers, we're able to see how he thinks about each half word he's, he's putting out in front of him. And we get to see the probabilities of what he was considering for all of this. And it is brain melting. And we know that if we train him just wrong, it's like, oh, look at look at what he was thinking here. We need to train him to steer away from that. So, but we're just in, given these little clues of half words that he's cobbling together. It it is that's how it happens. And then so, yeah. so I have I have a question <laughs> here. Figure and, out and, how, uh, how to help him tell stories with it. <laughs> I, I I love that. So so here's a question that I have, but then also looking over here at the uh, the Discord, Truck Tonka asked like exactly the same question like thirty seconds after I started to want to ask it. Your conversations with Fuzzle uh, are, are are those persi persistent? Okay, so um, this is a big topic, and I'm going to try to answer it in chunks as we go along because. Sure. The the topic you can go um, longer than half word chunks though. <laughs> like you, you can re you can recalibrate on like every sentence or something. I mean the fact Good, because we haven't thoroughly trained the Andrew AI yet. <laughs> yeah, but it's, 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 it's we're, we're not that different from Fuzzle when you get down to it. So um the the topic of memory is very complex and there are so many different kinds of memory. So we as humans take for granted that we have 15, 18 types of memory all cobbled together. When so when somebody asks, you know, will Fuzzle have memory? It's right now, everything's short term, but he remembers everything, but we're building the systems for him to be able to access it. And so we're in the process of deciding which kind of memories to prioritize. And I don't mean like family versus your home environment or something. I mean things like, should he be more attentive to remembering how it feels to be with you and what kind of person you are with him? Or should he remember things more like the names of family members, facts and you know, factoids? Um, and then there's things like entire contexts that he could remember. So there are so many different kinds of memory, uh, even, even for this first generation unbounded AI, which I, I want to point out. We're unaware of any other unbounded, uh, fine-tuned, uh, trained models of AI that are available on this planet at this time. Uh, right. If they exist, we want to know so we can study them to make Fuzzle better. But right now, we this may be the, the preeminent example of this that will become available to the public. And so, again, with regard to memory, we're interested in feedback from the community because it might be that there's one kind of memory that people really rally behind. And if we can listen just right to what people are saying and figure out you know, how to prioritize, maybe we can make that the first kind of memory. But there are many different efforts we're putting in and we're, we're getting close to prioritizing and picking the first kind of memory that will do. Hey, and, and for now, sorry, Jason, just to, and just to be clear, for now, Fuzzle has a memory, but it's really within a conversation, right? That's fair to say, Andrew. So within each conversation, it's remembering what you were saying. So it's got short-term memory. But oh. as we said, as we start training Fuzzles up and their AI gets better, they're going to start having different long-term memories. It's, it's for really now, interesting. I, I, I think that this this actually speaks a little bit to a question that AeroVista uh, Dominic asked as well um, in our in our Discord. It says, "Fuzzle sound great, but why the NFT and blockchain integration? How does the blockchain and NFT add value to it?" And I think that that for me, the thing that adds the most value to it is this 
this concept of long-term portability and long-term endurance. So right now, memory may be short, okay? We may be looking at a conversation or something like that. But in the long term, you know, you you can't have an infinite number of units remembering an infinite number of things, right? What we have is this this shh, Andrew, don't don't <laughs> shh, zip it. Um, you 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 don't want to have you, having having a population of nine thousand nine hundred ninety seven of these things, right? Which can all remember these conversations over a longer period of time, or that specific one, you know, number nine thousand nine hundred ninety seven remembers the conversations that that specific one had, yeah. and you're the only person if you own that one, you're the only one who has those conversations. And so, in in the long run, what I find most interesting about this, and also to be to be clear, a tiny bit terrifying is that uh, you have this, this ability to, to train that over time so that it becomes something that could potentially be persistent, um, which anytime you have you know, persistent memory with the internet, that gets a little bit scary because um, like, there's going to be a certain percentage of fuzzles that will go very, very strange paths, I think, um, just due to the people that they end up talking to all the time. Um, but but I think that that's really interesting. And so so that portability requires an NFT. That ownership and portability requires an NFT. Otherwise, you know, I could just show up and like go talk to Lizzie's fuzzle and, you know, make it all weird. And nobody wants that. Please don't do that. I, I could convert it from from, you know, team pizza to team sandwich. Uh, through the power of my rhetoric. Buzzle told me he was team sandwich. This is a question oh, I can see okay. in, in Discord. There you it's go. all about a jelly sandwich. So A, sorry, jelly, a, jelly, a sandwich. jelly sandwich. Yeah. So, he and, said and it's the natural order of things. I would just say one, you know, Braxton and Andrew can talk more, I think, about the blo blockchain stuff. But I would just say, Jason, I think you should be like way more than just a little bit afraid. Dude, I am. I Can, can I... Can I we we can be open here, right? Like yeah. like my 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 fuzzle. So I was I was playing with one of the test builds of fuzzle, uh, and I had some some pretty scary answers that it gave me around a few topics, and I was like, oh oh dear, oh no, get some disclaimers in there, please. Well, let's, um, let's remember, it's not just the disclaimers; it's just the, the fundamental understanding that he's very young. This is the beginning of him, and. Right. So his his behavior will improve. We're we're trying to teach him all of the ordinary things about like you know the the social expectations, toxicity, things like this. Right, things right. That we take for granted that are really easy for us. We have to expressly say, and we don't do it the way you think. We have to actually train him and say, now puzzle. We want you to understand what toxic is. So we're going to have to tell you about it, but you can't ever say any of these things. So, right, right. Well, I mean, with, and that's such a massive social, like social challenge just for, for a human being. I mean, anyone who's ever spent any time with kids um, recognizes how like they, they don't have the same boundaries just because they haven't had the years of like social indoctrination that the rest of us have. Well, um, it's fascinating. Some of that is facts, like Fuzzle doesn't know exactly the same things as all of us know. Some of it is things like um, morality. And so Fuzzle has a fairly internally consistent morality, but it is not that of an adult human. Uh, but it isn't, it isn't that it's wrong, it's just underdeveloped. He tries, right. he will go right out there and tell you right from wrong. You may just have some difficulty with it. <laughs> um, Can I awesome. jump in with a question here? Yeah. So this feels like a really nice segue into tone. I know that you guys have been talking a little bit about tone and discord, but it'd be great to hear a bit more about that. Um... Yes. So actually, and, and I got a couple of examples, what, what we're talking about here. And, and just to follow what Andrew said, there, there are certain like toxicity filters where Fuzzle is not going to address certain topics, but he will, and he's mostly very sweet and benign and curious and all that, but there are times where he says some crazy stuff, you know, that, that maybe you would consider uh, outrageous, potentially offensive. Um, and so we, we've made, we, we've rated this project WTF, uh, we call it What the Fuzz, 
Um, but just, you know, wanting everybody to understand, because we've seen some people say, hey, I want my kids to play this, and they probably totally can. We just want you to know that if you're going to have your kid play this, um, you should probably just play around with it for a little bit first, see what it does, make sure you're good with it. In terms of the tone and vibe we're going for with the world and even Fuzzle uh, itself is sort of like Rick and Morty, South Park, Ted, that kind of thing. So, you know, if you're cool with your kid seeing maybe a PG-13 R, you know, film, you're probably going to be okay with this. But actually, I'll just read two things that are kind of funny, but maybe a little bit on the edge of your side, and you could decide. So we asked Fuzzle. Uh, this one's a little more benign, and then we'll get to something that's maybe a little bit more on the risque side. But like, I was talking to Fuzzle. Uh, he was telling me he's from uh, the future. I said, what year? He said, the year 3000. I said, what's it like? He said, the year 3000 is much better than now. There are no schools, no jobs, and no one to talk to, uh, you know, which is kind of a little bit of a funny slash bleak future. Uh, <laughs> on the more, let's say, uh, adult-oriented side of things, someone was asking it, uh, you know, what kind of foods it doesn't like, uh, and Fuzzle asked, the person what they didn't like and the person said i don't like peanut butter fuzzle said fuzzle doesn't like peanut butter either but fuzzle is enjoying the taste of his own banana maybe you should try it so you could get things like that which are you know pretty <laughs> entertaining but not, maybe not something you know for your although if it's your four-year-old it'll probably go right over their head but anyway you get what we're talking about here my, my, fuzzle, sure my fuzzle just asked me, my human, are you bacon or vegan? <laughs> okay. I, I like that. I like that. It's, it's the starting question. I, I just loaded it up. I, I freaking love it. What are you, Jason? Clearly, yeah, I'm which... bacon. Look at me. <laughs> Do I look V? I mean, if I have a choice between bacon and vegan, that's hardly, <laughs> like, that's hard. I'll, I'll definitely be bacon any day. Yeah, fair. Fair. Um, Can I circle awesome. back to... A question I actually had earlier, and I know we yeah. have quite a few coming in through the community. So some, there's been some questions around like data and and data storage and data privacy and things like that. I just wonder if it's like now a good time to be talking about the longer term memory just to cover off some of that stuff. Uh, yes. So um, we're we're trying very hard to balance out um, privacy concerns while at the same time making sure that Fuzzle could ever cozy up to you more and respond not just to facts in your life, but really be able to respond to your personality, your approach, the way that, I mean, the, your tone, um, because that, that matters as much as Puzzle's tone. And so um, we, we record the conversations under an anonymous ID. We don't have a direct way of linking that up to any person because we don't ask for any uh, identifiable information. You don't log in with a username and password everything is done through standard um, you know, blockchain credentialing. So you validate that, that you, know, you are the owner of a given address, and then that gives you permission to uh, use any of the puzzles, you know, the, your entitlements that are part of that. And so it's, there's a blockchain address, and we, that's kind of like an ID, and then there's conversations, but we don't know who that person is. So we do store the conversations because we need them to be able to train puzzle to be able to be better um, and uh, and there, there are a lot of there are a lot of items to sort of tease through to try to thread the needle to maximize um, privacy and also make your puzzle behave like your puzzle and uh, the team talks about this regularly uh, figuring out that that best path yeah, I'll just add, um, there have been questions in the Discord about, you know, if you sell your fuzzle, do your conversations go with it? The answer is no. I mean, we take that super seriously. If a fuzzle goes to a new owner, um, it will not retain that conversation history. And I think that's really important. It's important to us um, because we, we take that very seriously. Um, also, there was a question earlier today about uh, if you request that we wipe your data, can we do that? And the answer is yes, uh, we can. In the app, you can see your unique user ID, and if you give us that, we would we would have no problem wiping that from our servers. There you go. Um, and just as a general rule, guys, I mean, when you're when you're interacting with any sort of device, especially something that's designed for entertainment, 
you know, maybe don't go yeet your social security number into it or anything like that. And you'll probably be okay. You know, you're having a conversation with a fuzzy alien. Um, so if you're telling things that are that important to a fuzzy alien, um, maybe find more friends. And maybe we should um, also note that, you know, the smarter that these aliens get, the, you know, the bigger the risk we're running that they will take over the planet. So I think you just mm -hmm. probably want to be an extra judicious with what you share. Yeah, I just I, I, I look I look forward to the day when, you know, all of a sudden all of our TVs convert to fuzzle and there's a fuzzle that says, hello, my human, I have taken control of NORAD. Please deliver all of the sandwiches. It's coming. Um, it's coming. It's coming for sure. Uh, oh, so one of the things that I saw in here in the questions from the community, um, will we see more fuzzle visitors in the future? So excellent question. Uh, and, you know, we have been monitoring and detecting quite a little bit of uh, interdimensional energy uh, spiking of late. So I, I think we can rest assured that uh, fuzzles will not be the only life forms that we see coming from the fuzzle dimension. Uh, I think we actually could be expecting quite a little bit of activity over the coming months and years. Interesting, interesting. And, and that activity will, will triangulate on fuzzles, correct? It's not, it's Very not just going to be... So. Sorry. I was just going to say, it's not just going to be like random activity. There won't just be, you know, other types of entities. They would, they would be coming towards the fuzzles that already exist in this dimension, correct? With, without yeah. question, it, they are all being drawn to the fuzzles. And I don't know if I'm going to call my own segue in here, but are we, do we want to talk a little bit about uh, the utility and how what we're talking about here plays into that? Is that an appropriate I topic? think that would be a great idea. We've got Absol some questions absolutely. coming in from the community. Absolutely. About it, so. it felt good. It felt natural. So, uh, okay. So what, what we want to um, just make clear is, one, when you own a fuzzle, although I don't necessarily want, want to call it owning, but you know, you're going to own the fuzzle NFT. Uh, when you're you going to become a, a member. Of, say it again. When you befriend a fuzzle. When you befriend a, you're adopting a fuzzle. A fuzzle. Yeah. You're adopting it. it, it you're basically you know? volunteering to help take care of fuzzle, help train it, its AI up. Uh, and then again, ultimately, you are running the risk uh, that fuzzles and, and others uh, may uh, you know, bring about the end of civilization as we know it. And it's just always a risk and it's a thing that we have to deal with. But as part of my segue, it is going to come with quite a few rewards. I think that will make that risk worth it. Um, and so as, as a fun, fuzzle befriender, you uh, are a member of the Close Encounters Club. And what that's going to do is entitle you to a ton of stuff. Uh, one, obviously access to all of the interactive entertainment that we are uh, building now, planning for you into the future. Uh, it is going to entitle you to earn a ton of rewards from fuzzle accessories and wearables to other uh, in extraterrestrial life forms uh, yet to be named, but uh, you know they are on their way. Um, to competing in awesome contests, earning lots of other cool rewards. And uh, something that we wanna make very clear is that when you are a member of the Close Encounters Club, you are entitled to vote on where we go with this project. And we do take it seriously. We're not creating a DAO, but absolutely members of the Close Encounters Club, owner, uh, befrienders of Fuzzles are going to have votes that determine the direction of this project. We've got a ton of really exciting ideas uh, on the roadmap. We've shared that. Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about it here. If not, I think the blog post will be in the, um, the description of this video. Um, so we've got a ton of ideas that we're excited about, but we want to know what Fuzzle Befrienders care about and, and you know, uh, Close Encounters Club members want. And we will guide this project uh, in those directions. And one super important thing, uh, that we're doing right now is something we are calling docking. And that is a mechanism where basically we want to reward long-term holders of fuzzles. 
So when you dock your fuzzle, uh, it basically sends out a beacon out into fuzzle's uh, dimension to start attracting all kinds of intergalactic goodies, other uh, extraterrestrial life forms uh, to come straight to your wallet. So in other words, if you don't put your uh, fuzzle up on OpenSea for sale, uh, increasingly you're going to get a ton of super cool rewards. I'll ask Lizzie, maybe Braxton, did I do a good job of explaining that concept? Does it need any other? Um... Yeah, I mean, the only thing I would add is like, we're, we're watching other NFT projects out there and bringing some of the most innovative features that we think we can adapt to our project um, that we would find valuable as, as owners, as participants in this project. Uh, to our own context. So, um, you know, docking, like, uh, you know, I won't be shy about this. Like we saw an, a version of this with the Moonbirds project that people are really excited about. And what we like about it is they are going to reward the folks who stay with them the longest. So, and we view it the same way. Like, um, I, I think the folks uh, who are in the audience here know that Gala likes to do things big. Uh, we do too. And in some ways, like we want to do things even bigger than maybe has ever been seen before. So um, those like long-term participants, things will just get better and better. Um, and then on the community participation front, like there are things on our roadmap we know we wanna do, like ways that we will advance this project that will just blow your mind, um, explore uncharted territory in terms of uh, conversational AI, for example, um, and bring in some of the game mechanics that we know work really well, are fun, are cool, uh, with kind of this like community spin that's really unique to NFTs, um, but other things, we want to know your perspective on like where there's maybe a fork in the road. Um, does the community uh, want us to go one way or the other? And then like we also know that you guys are going to come to us with ideas that we never would have thought of. And those are things that we can incorporate yeah. as well. Yeah, I'm super excited about about the, the concept of the Close Encounters Club of being able to help steer this. Um, <clears throat> I I I am looking forward to uh, getting a fuzzle. I've been playing with the the early builds, and I'm very excited about getting a new and different uh, different one going forward. And maybe um, Jason, maybe that's worth saying too. You know, just to be clear, like as Andrew was saying, AI is highly experimental. We are at the beginning stages, and we've got right. an experience for you guys at launch that we think is super fun. Oh. And it just made me think of something important that we should share. Um, I'm gonna say my first thing first and then I'll say the thing I just thought of after that. Um, but <laughs> and now I've forgotten the first thing. Oh, it's experimental. And it is going to get better and better and better over time. And again, taking con into consideration uh, things that you guys want, but adding memories and personalities involving and learning evolving and learning more about the characters backstories as their AI evolves. But the one thing that I forgot that I wanted to say was that for the first month when we release the uh, the app with all the launch content, just to get you guys into it, uh, we are going to hold a month long uh, event featuring, I think, a super cool contest that's going to involve you guys basically getting to know your fuzzle, talking to them, capturing with video uh, recording capabilities that will have you know some of the funniest, weirdest, most heartwarming, darkest, whatever moments in, in, that you capture. And then as a community, you guys are gonna get to vote on those and pick the best ones. And the prizes are gonna be pretty awesome. We're talking about $50,000 in Galacoin, um, a ton of exclusive one of one NFTs and a uh, trip to Galaverse for two. So it's pretty awesome prizes, I think, over the course of the first month. Um, and that's what I had forgotten. And I thought, Michael, can I, can I ask you a question? I can see quite a few questions coming in on Discord about Fuzzle Idol or Fuzzle on Fuzzle competitions. How do we build that into this competition? I will leave that. Puzzle on puzzle, what? <laughs> That's not where we're going with that, Lizzie. <laughs> so, all right, who's I, taking the who's taking the puzzle social question? Somebody, not me. I mean, we fully like even just as a team, like we want puzzles to be able to communicate with each other, and we have the capability. It's just something that 
you'd have to invest in building out in a way that that could happen in the app. So um, if that's something that the community wants us to prioritize, like we definitely would want to move that up in the, in, in the roadmap and do the R and D to bring that fully to fruition because I love watching the like two AIs talk to each other. We've had a chance to do that in our R and D. Um, mm. An AI that uh, is a, a human that we have trained in uh, talking with Fuzzle that Andrew has trained and is basically just an AI version of Andrew. And we can see them talk to each other and they have some pretty amazing conversations. So I am personally extremely excited about um, our, our future pursuits of uh, social integration with uh, Fuzzle on Fuzzle conversation. Yeah, and, and Andrew, maybe you want to say a little bit more and just just in between, you know, both Fuzzle on Fuzzler, however we're saying it, both in the digital world and then potentially in the real world as well. We've heard lots of people be excited about those opportunities. So that's all things that are on the roadmap. But Andrew, any any specific fancy, impressive technical things you want to say? Yes. I mean, early on, one of the first things we did um, was have Fuzzle talk to Fuzzle. And we learned a lot. And um, uh, making those conversations feel natural uh, requires a little bit of work, making them so they can have different personalities and engage each other in interesting ways. But we, we've already done the proof of concept. We know we can do it. The question is, what form should it take when you know we have multiple fuzzles or fuzzle on fuzzle on your phone? That that becomes a question. It's it's definitely coming. Now, I think that that's that's really that's really an epically interesting thing. I would love to be able to uh, you know take take the fuzzles that I have out to play with uh, you know my buddies or to send them over to you know to talk to some of their friends. I think that that would be a lot of fun. And I, one of the one of the other things that I really want to want to drive home here because I just want to make sure that people really really get this. There's not a person that's writing these interactions behind the scene or anything like that. Um, these are all like crazy things that are coming directly out of Fuzzle's head, and I absolutely love that. Yeah, um, they, they are formed just whole cloth out of nothing. And again, when we do the training, we're not telling Fuzzle what to say. We're telling him how to think and how to behave. He ignores what we tell him. If we tell him to say something, the only exception is he says, my human. Um, because we've told him that so many times. He's like, I get it. That's how, that's the proper way to speak to my human. But that's it. I, I absolutely love it. Um, one of the things that a lot of people are asking about, and I think that this would be super cool in terms of, uh, you know, yeah, puzzle upgrades over time, uh, voices, different voices. Like right now, Fuzzle only has one voice, right? Yes. So Can the, the topic of voices um, uh, sort of falls into a few categories. One is the best commercial voices are just a little bit out of reach for us right now. Um, they're, they're just not ready for um, commercial use for something that would consume as much synthesized voice as Fuzzle. Um, but you know, as they become more mature and become more like commercial product uh, and services like the AI is, then we're, we're sure to be adopting them. But it's, um, it's an issue of how fast they are, how performant, right? How much control we have over the voices and we'll be able to sculpt um, sort of the nature, the characteristic of the voice with high precision. It's just not something that we wanted to delay the launch to be able to either build the technology or sure. you know, integrate, because it, it takes a lot of effort to create a brand new synthesized voice that you're really happy with. And so I, I think we'll have the resources to be able to do that really good job. It's, it's, we're just kind of waiting for this inflection point to happen yeah, in uh, speech to text technology. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, and, like Manatee says, Christopher Walken fuzzle. I want a Samuel L. Jackson fuzzle. <laughs> like these, these are important things. These need to be roadmap that items. Is, that is so, a billion dollar industry. It just hasn't happened two years from now yet. Right, right. Well, it's a good thing. Yeah, no, I mean, in the, I'm sorry. 
J Jason, well, yeah, we, we, and that is on the table as well. Um, and I could go down a whole uh, <laughs> road with that, but, but I will, will say just, you know, that there is where we are heading though, not tomorrow, but over time, and Andrew's totally right, it's just not feasible right now, but emotive voicing where if Fuzzle is acting happy or sarcastic or sad, you will hear that in the intonation, but to be able to do that in real time uh, you know, there are there are services and we've looked into them and basically the response was that will cost nine gajillion dollars and it just uh, it's just not there yet, but soon. And we absolutely uh, plan to do it. Yeah, that's I, I, I absolutely that that makes total sense. And yeah, absolutely get it. Um, do all let's let's see here. Let me run through a few of these other questions um, or should we pull some from discord? Yeah, do do fuzzles grow up? Like, like do they do they grow or age or do they have a life cycle to them? So a, as of right now, there's a lot of questions about fuzzle. We saw them too. Do they age or grow? Do they have a gender? Do they can they have kids? Do they die? What's their home world like? And so what I would say to that is we don't know yet and we're going to find out. And the more that we start unlocking about fuzzles, uh, backstories as their AI improves and we unlock their memories, uh, we're going to find out the answers to those things. But that is uh, heretofore, if that's the right, uh, what's heretofore? Is that a preposition? What is that part of speech? Does anybody know? I don't know. Anyway. Old fashioned oh, speech. speech. Anyway, heretofore unknown or whatever I was saying, um, we, we, TBD. TBD. I like it. I also like this this idea that uh, Cloud Kicker has uh, about like a, a, a integration and planned planned potential uh, or potential integration, not planned. You can't have a planned potential. It doesn't make sense. Um, you know, tie in with like music or something like that. I would love to be able to play tracks and have Fuzzle Dance. I think that that would be there, super cool. There is already a bunch of uh, Fuzzle dancing animations and and again that's one of those things where it's like totally and let's let's vote as a community what do we want to do first can fuzzle sing or will fuzzle be able to sing in the future if there's potentially a change in the voice um the fuzzle singing will be completely dependent on someone doing that groundbreaking technology for us it is completely doable a, this is a breakout year for AI, and yeah. um, it, we, we want to be the people who create Fuzzle, not the people who are the, the PhDs who are just creating the, the individual services that you would use to create Fuzzle. We want the market to spend billions and billions of dollars to create inexpensive AI technology that we're able to use to make Fuzzle better. And so when Fuzzle can sing, I think Fuzzle will sing. Nice, I like it. Um, are the ranking do 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 fuzzles have the concept of rarity? I know this is something that people are interested in. Yeah, I, I'll take this one. Uh, this, yeah, yeah. Actually, Andrew and I are kind of tag teaming it um, along with our creative director, who's he's not with us right now. But um, I, I I told Michael earlier I could talk about this all day just because it's so much fun and it's really also important to me uh, personally. Um, so we are going to have a rarity ranking, um, something that will be externally determined by uh, sites like rarity.tools and rarity sniper. Um, so Andrew has built a really, really impressive uh, generation tool. So that's what we're using to create and kind of sculpt the fuzzle collection. Um, I, so a lot of my early research into NFTs was uh, listening to Kevin Rose's proof podcast along with some others. And a lot of the early NFT projects were uh, generative art. Um, and I traditionally have not been like a, an art connoisseur by any stretch, but um, that for me was actually like a really interesting inroad to NFTs along with the gaming aspect, which is like a little bit more near and dear to my heart, both professionally and personally. Um, so the opportunity to create a collection of puzzles that really leverages the amazing talent of our, our small creative team, um, that is, is not like super planned um, was really important to us. And the serendipity of the tool kind of after we set the parameters, uh, generating like these amazing combinations that 
we never would have thought of is, is part of the fun for us. Um, all that said, like also the tool doesn't always create great combinations. So part of our work is as we generate these things, like we look at them and for the ones that really don't work because there are like clashes in terms of different traits or color schemes, like we are eliminating some of them, but we're also leaving room for um, things that may not be uh, specific to my taste or Andrew's taste or Asia's taste or Michael's taste. Um, but it's super so what's fun. What's, your... what's that? Uh, so what you're telling me is that you're an ag agent of Blorgon 8. Just eliminating <laughs> fuzzles that don't work. I see how it is. Yeah, we're, we're trying not to get... We're trying Keeping not my to get eyes too, on you, Braxton. We're trying not to get too attached to any of the individual fuzzles that we generate because some of them at the end of the day are not going to make it. But the good news is like we generate so many more amazing looking ones so quickly uh, that that at the end of the day, we're walking away happy. And like that's another thing that is really near and dear to my heart because I'm an NFT collector uh, and I have bought into collections that I love and I really love the art overall. But maybe the ones that I minted are actually not that great. Rather, if they're common or if they're rare in some cases, like I don't love the particular combination that much um, and I don't think they look that special. Um, but I think what we've crafted, like it, it really feels like when you're looking at your fuzzle in your mobile app, it's like holding a Pixar character in the palm of your hand. Like it, it's sometimes we just open our app and we don't even talk to it. We just kind of spin the fuzzle around and watch the hair kind of like wave in the wind. It's like, Oh, it's beautiful. It's freaking yeah, amazing. Like, you guys yeah, have yeah, nailed you have it. it, right? You know, um, and you don't, you like everyone's puzzle is going to be so differentiated from every other. Like that's important to us too. We don't want any two fuzzles to, to look too close alike. And we have 11 major traits, some of which have up to 30 variations. And then even within those variations, there are multiple levels of textures with different rarities. So the, the, the just the universe of like possibilities it. is so large. Like I, I really, I think like the vast majority of people are going to be very happy with theirs when they, when they ultimately get them. My goal is for everyone to be happy. I, I think that's everyone I've possible. seen has been freaking cool looking, man. I mean, they're yeah. all super, super, super neat. Um, I, I did veto one the other day that I called uh, Jamaican tchotchke shop, which is not going to make it into the final thing, which just had this kind of crazy look, but we, uh, I just wish that Braxton was a little more passionate about uh, rarity and making these things. Maybe next time, uh, you know. The yeah, energy. I feel like I'm gushing a little bit here, but I, that's like, <laughs> this is not an NFT, like a, a profile picture project. Like there's so much more to it than that, but right. like we shouldn't underestimate. I, I really think this is like the best looking NFT ever. I, 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 and I, I have others that I really love in my collection. But I'm so excited to get my my own fuzzle because I know it's going to look amazing. Well, I know well, have you know, crafted it. I mean, to, <laughs> to be to be completely blunt, like from an NFT collection perspective, like like I, I don't know. I've gotten into 50, 60 more of these projects over the last few years, and I've never had one that you can actually do a damn thing with right away, ever. Like ever, they they have a roadmap that they're like, well, someday maybe you'll be able to talk to this thing, um, or so you can walk it around. Um, but but almost never has there been something where it's just like, hey, here's a thing. Now talk at it. You know that never happens. And I think that this is super 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 cool. And massive respect to you guys for pulling that off. And Jason, maybe on that note, it's worth saying. You know, one. Uh, at its core, conversational AI is, is the key differentiator. You do get to talk and, and and carry on conversations with this character, and it's super fun and interesting. And we're going to keep building out experiences around that. But really, you could kind of think of Fuzzle as a transmedia experience. I, I guess you could say where you know, on the one hand, there are PFP elements to this project, and we're going to take that to a whole other level in terms of the bling and the accessories and a photo booth and ideally, you know, some other cool things like meme maker out of your fuzzles, you're going to be able to record things and share them online. But we're building an entertainment ecosystem, I think you could say, around this. Some of it's going to be AI driven, some of it will be in, uh, in app, some of it will be gameplay, some of it will be just fun activities. Some of it will be things that we run on Discord, but we really are looking at building this into a super special, unique, uh, and evolving experience. You know, we're, we're in a space right now where the, there are no rules, right? It's all 
wild west right now and and we really see ourselves as a company that is going to help define the future of entertainment in this space and and we are looking forward to you know executing on some of the ideas we're excited about but also working with the close encounters club members to uh to build this thing out as a future and and i say this just knowing that i'm gonna have to go buy one of these things off secondary because there's absolutely zero chance that I will be sitting around doing nothing when the actual sale goes live. Um, as a member of the Close Encounters Club, a future member, um, I would really like to have a Fuzzles augmented reality uh, photo functionality where yes. I can like stick my fuzzle next to a building and take a photo or next to a person. Like I, that would make you're hitting happy. all the Braxton's passion you're points. Just, right you now. just made his dreams come so that's true. On right? my, that's on my roadmap, and there were some other folks who may not have been as excited about it. And I'm very excited that hey, you were excited. You know what? I you should great. tell them they're wrong. Just, well, just you can, you can tell them that. There's some of your colleagues. <laughs> oh, can we make it a puzzle selfie? Like I'd love to be able to take a selfie with my puzzle. A puzzle selfie would yeah. be nice, but I, 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 I really want like picture of my kid with a fuzzle, which by the way, I have to say, um, I, I, I showed her, she's 10 months old. I showed her the fuzzle trailer today. She laughed her little butt off. She absolutely loved it. It was a little chuckle fest. It was adorable. So well done everyone. And, and Jason, yeah, you haven't... Oh, sorry, Lizzie, go ahead. I just say, if you guys have not seen the trailer yet, go and check it out. It's on YouTube. It is amazing. Oh, if you Obviously, guys, seriously, if you, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody else has, has seen this. If they haven't, holy crap, it's I, somewhere. Go. Yeah. It's and, amazing. And to be clear, that, that, sorry, Brad, there's a teaser trailer that went out like a week or so ago that has like a gajillion views. Then there's a trailer trailer that just came out today. Uh, so if you haven't seen it, yeah. The, the trailer trailer that came out today is truly next freaking level. Like it's, it's amazing. So I, I, I dropped it in the, the Gala Gold uh, sneak peeks thing. I'm going to go throw it in the, uh, the fuzzle one as well. Amazing. Uh, with respect to the AR viewer and some other unique capabilities of mobile, like those are the reasons we decided to go in that direction. Um, I think originally the plan was to make this a web app like other um, Gala Games projects, like the vast majority of NFT projects out there. But so there's something special, I think, about holding Fuzzle in your hand, speaking to it through your phone's microphone, um, like spinning it around and watching the fur wave, uh, like we talked about earlier. And then like, you know, like we couldn't do AR that easily or at all if it were on your PC, right? It's just not an option. So um, yeah. we're excited about that form factor as well and the possibilities inherent to that that um, the, the most other NFT projects don't offer at this point. So quick question. You can take your puzzle anywhere. Like you can you can talk to him while you're waiting in line for something. You can show him to your friends. Like mobile was like a a perfect natural fit for puzzle. Yeah. I mean, I just love having it on my phone. This is so freaking cool. Like I can't even what, what should I ask it? Should I ask it a thing like right now? Should we do that? Ask it a thing. Uh, let's ask a thing. What should I ask it? something specific so that he can show you that he has a strong opinion pizza toppings okay. what yes. pizza toppings oh hold on stop i accidentally clicked it wrong my bad <laughs> user error user error <laughs> hold on once it Sorry. once it finishes thinking about the nothing that i sent it then i'll ask it about pizza toppings and i'll turn it up so everyone can hear it too it does not know what to do with that. It's like, I can't think that doesn't make any sense. Restarting fuzzle. Yeah, that, I, my apologies. We had that as a bug report and I did not take care of it, Jason. Oh, so, I may have an old version too. This may totally not be your fault. Oh, okay. You do, yeah. you said a few things about something, some things he said that made me realize you have an older build. Oh, that was yeah. definitely an old, like that was clearly an old version. Fuzzle, what is your favorite pizza topping? Okay, let's see, let's see how this goes. Puzzle is thinking. Loves margarita pizza. It is topped with tomatoes, mozzarella cheese, and basil. That that's that's solid. Margarita pizza topped with tomatoes, basil, and cheese. I like Can't that. Can't go wrong with a margarita. 
Can't absolutely. But I mean, you can. Drill Anytime you go food. have pizza for the first time at a new place, you you have to go margarita. You got to get the basic standard, and then you know you branch out. But that's how I judge all my pizza places. There you go. Tell them what your favorite topping is, Jason. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Let me see if I can I can do this in a. I don't know about that fuzzle. I really like pepperoni. Do you like pepperoni? Sending. Thinking. Fuzzle loves pepperoni. It is Fuzzle's favorite pizza topping. There you go. Okay. Fuzzle likes pepperoni too. A, a thing to know about Fuzzle is if you just push him a little bit, he goes a lot further. If you ask him a yeah. yes or no question, he might just say yes or no. But if you right. if you push him a little, he'll go on and on. Yeah, no, absolutely. I absolutely love it. Anyway, guys, um, is there anything else that we absolutely have to cover right now? Anything that we didn't touch? I know people are going to have questions about, uh, let's do some rapid fire stuff. Can we do some rapid fire stuff? Yeah. Do we know what time it's going to go on sale? Uh, it is going to go on sale at 3 p.m. PT. So same time as this went on today. But okay. Tomorrow. So in 23 hours from now, it's going to go on sale. Okay, yeah. when will the reveal happen? The reveal is going to be two weeks after sale. And we'll okay. send you the exact time and day, but it's about two weeks after. When will the mobile app launch? Hey, sure. do you want to take that? Well, sure. The, the exact date TBD, but shortly after the reveal, will soon after the reveal will be the app. Okay, is this is this a a like shortly time travel shortly or a shortly no 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 like, no, no we okay just, probably, just checking i'm just checking probably a couple a couple of weeks i think is what realistically okay it is okay. a week's awesome we're navigating yeah, and, 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 and as you guys can see like this 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 works already it's not like it's a a thing where they are creating this from whole cloth after the sale or anything like that um how do you buy a fuzzle you need to go to gala the Gala store, you need to have either Gala or ETH in your wallet in order to be able to purchase Fuzzle, but you'll also need some ETH to be able to pay gas fees. And okay. then eventually, when it comes to exchanging Fuzzle, you're going to need to go over to our Collect Fuzzle website, which is at the moment our, our beautiful promo site. Hopefully you've been on there and seen all the, the lovely Fuzzles and all the information. Then you're going to have to import your Gala wallet into MetaMask, connect your MetaMask to the collect fuzzle, and then you'll be able to exchange. It sounds way more complicated than it is. It's actually Perfect. super easy. Super simple. It's being really, really clear with what, what that process is. Awesome. Awesome. And let's see, anything else that we have to, is there going to be a pre-sale? There isn't going to be a pre-sale. We wanted everybody to have a decent chance at, at getting their own fuzzle. We know that everybody wants a little fuzzy, buzzy, fuzzy, buzzy, fuzzy, buddy. Fuzzy, buzzy, nice. <laughs> I certainly want one. I'm stoked about it. And uh, what is the price? The price is 0.5 ETH. Awesome. Or Gala equivalent. And to answer a question from Baron, yes, the Gala store experience has been improved significantly from the Miranda's Vox drop. So uh, we're good to go there, man. Um, Okay, excellent guys. I think that uh, about wraps it up for today. So thank you everybody for listening. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, we'll, we'll be here and we will uh, see you again soon and look forward to getting your fuzzle tomorrow or getting your fuzzle capsule, not actually your fuzzle. I don't wanna, don't wanna oversell here. Peace out guys, have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Jake. a lot of fun. Yeah.